Let's take a look at a CAN bus uh, controller area network. Now I'm going to connect two Arduinos together with these uh, TGA 1050 chips. It comes in a little module like this. And that's going to allow me to uh, send uh, data between these two Arduinos uh, using the CAN bus uh, protocol here. Now the advantage to that is that uh, this is immune to uh, any common mode noise, okay? So what happens here is if we put a, a logic one into TX on this, this unit here, then this CAN H and CAN L up here, they're going to both have uh, 2.5 volts on them for a 5 volt supply. And in this side here, there's a differential receiver in here. And that's going to uh, show that we have zero voltage difference between the two of them. And it's going to put a logic one out on T RX here into this Arduino here. And that's called the recessive state. Now, if we put a logic zero in here, then on CAN H here, we're going to have about 4 volts. And on CAN L here, we'll have about 1.4 volts. And over here in the differential uh, receiver, it's going to show about uh, 2.6 volts difference. And it's going to put out a logic zero on, on RX here. And that's called the dominant state. Okay. Now, to have a true CAN bus controller, you actually need to have a CAN bus uh, controller built into the uh, chip. This Arduino doesn't have it. You can add another chip to this or some uh, microprocessors do CAN bus control. And we'll talk about the CAN bus frame, but for now we're just going to run uh, a UART frame through here. Now UART, what, what it does is just has a, uh, a start bit, and then it has eight data bits, and then it has a parity bit, and then it has a stop bit. Now these Arduinos, though, the um, the default state is no no parity bit, and the parity bit is there to do some um, error correcting. Okay, so if you want to have you want to use that parity bit when you put serial print uh, or serial begin 9600 baud, then you'd have a comma here, and then you'd have an 8e1. Now the e is for uh, even even parity, so it's eight bits. Here it is down here, eight bits even parity and one one stop bit okay so we'll we'll do that on this one here I'll, I'll add that to that and what happens when we send an H here then is that I'm going to send a start bit and then I'm going to start sending these bits across here and since there's two ones in here the computer's going to count those up says okay we have two ones that's even for this parity bit over here we're going to put a zero and then we're going to put our stop bit okay when it gets over to this Arduino, it's going to see that there's an even a number of ones there, and it's going to say, okay, that's that's good, and we'll accept that. When we send the L here, we're going to have our start bit, and then it has three ones here. Those That's odd. So we're going to add a one over here, and then our stop bit. And that'll give us four ones. When it gets over here, it'll count up the four ones and say, okay, that's even, and we're good. That's what we want. So it's kind of a, a just a crude way of uh, making of checking the data going between them you know it, you could have a couple of these interposed or something it wouldn't it wouldn't help but uh, yeah, just a, a little bit of a, a check there to make sure your, your data is coming across there now to have a true uh, CAN bus controller you're going to have to send a CAN frame over there and for that we have a start bit and then we have this identifier now this identifier has 11 bits to it and that allows us to have uh, 2,048 different devices in the field, different sensors, actuators, and uh, a lot of them come from the factory with a uh, the identifier number already preloaded into them, or they'll have a set of dip switches or some way to uh, program it in yourself. Now, another thing with this identifier, it establishes a priority. So, zero is the top priority, and 2,047 is going to be the lowest priority so say on your car uh, you know uh, some collision avoidance sensors are going to be the top priority they'll be a zero and uh, you know maybe your dome light's going to be the 2047 so uh, that's what makes this uh, CAN bus uh, so useful okay and this this RTR that's a, that's a, just a remote uh, uh, transmission request and then uh, this is an identifier um, extension bit and this is a oh, this is a data length code 
and so we're going to put it in this is your data so we're going to put eight eight bits in there and then your uh, crc that's uh that's your uh, cyclic redundancy check okay that's our 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 check to make sure everything's good and this is acknowledge and then this in the frame and then uh, ifs is a uh uh inner frame uh, space so they just put in the uh, uh three three logic ones in there uh just for some uh, timing and that's your uh that's your uh, can frame that you're going to send across there and that's what makes it so uh so useful and uh anyway that's uh oh up I, I hooked it up over here but we'll give it a try all right let me see that Turn that on, turn that one on. Now, these, I'm not using these two. These were from the uh, RS-45 uh, unit that I did before. I left them in there. So I'm coming off my Arduino T, uh, TX into this unit, and it's going through this uh, pair of wires here over to the uh, this Arduino here, and we're, we're turning, turning the uh, LED on and off. So... That's that's working that way, and uh, so we could uh, you know uh, run this a fairly long distance and be immune to uh, any noise here. Now, this is just going to be peer to peer. We can't use uh, uh, there's not really a bus to it because it's only going to be uh, talking to uh, one unit. You know, in order to have it a true CAN bus, we're going to need another controller in here, a CAN bus controller, so we can send that that frame along there. So, but uh, that's uh, you know. Uh, can bus. Thank you.